Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Got a brand new coffee from viewer Alex Lopez. Alex, thank you very, very much. Hang on. Boy, is this good. This has got a great, great kick to it. It is full. It is bold. It is Lavazza Espresso Italiano. Uh, absolutely wonderful, wonderful, full-bodied coffee. Uh, this is, it says right here, intensity is 5 out of 10. <laughs> Might be a little more than that for me this morning. Let me tell you something. Uh, you can make this in your coffee maker, a percolator, in your espresso maker, and that's what I did. I made my first cup in my espresso maker. Now I have uh, my my other cups are in my coffee maker. We'll kind of compare the espresso maker to the coffee maker and see if the uh, boldness is tuned down a little bit because of the coffee maker. But boy, this was a great cup of coffee. My thanks to Alex Lopez for sending this along. Fantastic. Lavazza Espresso Italiano. Boy, this is marvelous. If you want a full-bodied uh, cup of coffee, cup of espresso, uh, boy, this is this is the one to get. Now, in my espresso maker, I probably should use a smaller cup, you know, but uh, just put it in my mug. Got my basic mug this morning, my basic diner mug, and boy, it's just terrific, but it will definitely, definitely wake you up. Um, Alex wrote here, Mark, I hope you enjoy this coffee as much as I do. I think it will be perfect for your espresso coffee maker. Uh, yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. Alex also sent along some other items which will feature in new shave gear uh, segments. So look forward to that. Boy, we got a great show this morning. Hey, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. If you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I sure do appreciate it. Also know that the Monday Morning Mailbag is now in podcast form. So you can get up to uh, Spotify, Anchor, Google, Amazon, Apple, and uh, get the episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag just by searching for Monday Morning Mailbag and more. And the and more uh, indicates that there are going to be other episodes up there, such as the Second Cup podcast. So I just wanted to mention that uh, this is available in a podcast form. So if you are taking me along on your morning commute, know that you can now just get up there and uh, get the podcast every Monday morning. So the podcast will launch at the same exact time that the Monday morning mailbag launches on YouTube, just so you know. All right. Wow. Again, hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. I'm really excited. This is great coffee. We got some great stuff this morning in the show. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Looking forward to sharing it with you all. So let's kick things off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. This morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Joel Torano. That's spelled T-U-R-A-N-O. Joel, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Anyhow, Joel writes, Hi, Mark. I enjoy watching your Monday morning videos. Oh, thanks very much, Joel. I appreciate that. I want to share one of my shaving tips. I use a magnifying mirror to shave. Have been using this mirror every day for several years. Recently, went out of town and didn't have a magnifying mirror where I was staying. That is when I realized how important this tool is when shaving. You know the old adage, you don't miss it until you don't have it. If you do not have one of these types of mirrors, I suggest trying it as it will change your shaving experience. Here's a picture of the mirror I use and my shave den, Joel Toronto. Joel, thanks very much for this tip. This really is a neat approach and a neat tool for the traditional wet shave. I can see some wet shavers out there who just shave their necks. So they have a beard. Maybe they just shave their necks and they want to make sure they get a nice clean line along that neckline there when they do their beard magnifying mirror. Come in really, really handy. A neat tool that I never considered. And thank you so much for introducing it to us and a lot of other wet shavers out there. I'm sure it'll come in handy for a lot of viewers. So thank you very, very much for this unique approach to the traditional wet shave using a really neat tool 
a magnifying mirror. Thank you very much, Joel. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address uh, to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just email me a shaving tip. Email that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it on the morning shaving tip, uh, on the Monday Morning Mailbag in this segment, <laughs> you too will receive an original signed George sketch. Thanks very much for the tip, Joel. Really do appreciate it. Well, we have an extra shave tip this morning from viewer Al Spencer. And Al writes, another use for soap containers. And he sent along a picture. Check that out. Yeah, razor blade container. How about that? Yeah, use one. <laughs> Use one of those empty soap containers you have to store your razor blades. How about that? It looks to be a perfect, perfect size. <laughs> It'll seal nicely. Absolutely fantastic. Al, thanks for a really, really great extra shave tip this morning. This is one of those tips where I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Thanks for the extra shave tip this morning, Al. Really do appreciate it. Okay, this morning we have a little shaved in talk. And again, thanks to Joel Toronto for a really great shaving tip this morning. And also that wonderful photo of his shaved den, kind of a one-two punch shave tip and shaved den right off the bat. So thanks again, Joel, for that uh, look at your shaved den as well as the magnifying mirror shave tip. Really do appreciate it. But this tip, I got a couple of them here from a couple of viewers, is something you can use in the shaved den. Rather than pictures of a shaved den, of, rather than pictures of a shaved den, this is something you can use in the shaved den. Uh, and the first one comes from viewer Abane Samant, and he writes, Hi Mark, I just listened to your latest Monday morning mailbag and I thought I'd pass this along. I use this syringe with a tube to decant liquids from plastic to glass bottles, especially Clubman. It's relatively inexpensive and you don't lose any liquid in the transfer process. Keep up the great shaves. Abby, Abby, thanks very much for this. Of course, we talked about this in a previous Monday morning mailbag. I had some Clubman right here that I was trying to get into an Avon aftershave bottle that was empty, of course. And here it is right here. And I was able to get that in. Now, I was trying to find a funnel that would work. And Rodney Ripplinger had sent me uh, some time ago a couple of these funnels here, but the spout here on the bottom here. Uh, the dispenser spout, just a little too large. It won't fit into the into the hole of the uh, Avon uh, bottle here. Of course, you can see that the restrictor is, is kind of formed right into the glass. Uh, however, in this particular situation, uh, what I was able to do is I was able to take the, and this worked really, really well. So if you have an Avon bottle and a Clubman bottle like this, this worked really, really well. I was able to just take the Clubman and just turn it upside down and line it up with the the um, the hole here on the Avon bottle and just press a little bit and it's sealed up and I was able to transfer from Clubman to Avon with no leakage at all. Worked really, really well. Uh, and uh, I'll have to shoot a quick video on that to show you how that's done. I don't want to do it right now. It'll, go, <laughs> it'll get all over my keyboard. But uh, there it is, the Clubman in an Avon here glass bottle. Now, Mark Bagwell had messaged, had messaged me about glass bottles going from plastic to glass. And he had heard that uh, really after you put uh, a product from a plastic bottle into a glass bottle, let it sit in the glass bottle for about a month. This is what he is. This is what he's heard. This is what he's passing along. That way, whatever tinge of plastic might be in the liquid product will 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 remove will 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 go away somehow and i believe that would be capped maybe uncapped i'm not entirely sure if you know any further details on that please comment below really curious about that but the thinking is is that you want to let it sit in a glass bottle a little bit so that that plastic tinge will fade away and i'm assuming that'll be okay uh, capped. Uh, maybe it has to be uncapped. I'm not sure. But you want that plastic tinge in the liquid product to fade away. And um, from what Mark Bagwell is, has heard, 
A lot of wet shavers who have done this, when they go back to Clubman or some other product from a plastic bottle, go to the glass bottle after a while, uh, it's a wow effect. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So yeah, Abby, thanks very much for the syringe tip because I'm going to use that next time around because even though my method worked, well, you know what? I think your method would work much, much better and be a little bit easier too. Um, now, along the, same, along the same lines, viewer Glenn Martin wrote, and said, hi, Mark, this one might be a bit long-winded, but bear with me. Oh, that's okay. We will. <laughs> Some time ago, a barbecue buddy of mine gave me about a half dozen bottles of cheap barbecue marinade he didn't like. Each of the bottles came with a cheap marinade syringe attached to each bottle. I kept the syringes, and now I have one dedicated to my shave den. The needle fits into the smallest bottle orifices. I've discovered many of the hot sauce bottles have orifices identical to old aftershave bottles. I keep and clean and sanitize the bottles when they're empty. I use the new bottles cap and switch out the old caps when I use a new bottle of sauce. I have seen really cheap syringes in the barbecue and houseware sections of big box stores. I suppose you could also use a needle used to fill sports balls, but you'd have to rig some type of hose or funnel configuration. Well, I think the barbecue syringe is probably the better way to go, even though, and, and, the, and the sports ball needle, that might be um, uh, a workaround, but yeah, I, I wouldn't know how to rig anything up like that. Uh, just today I received my shaving tip cartoon from you, so it's appropriate I give you this tip of mine. Um, and he says here, I filled an empty bottle so you could see how well this process works. Best regards, Glenn, a.k.a. Bug Chief. Okay, <laughs> you heard me mention Bug Chief last week. Okay, folks, stay tuned for an update on the 8,000 subscriber giveaway uh, and Bug Chief. So, Glenn, thanks very much for passing that along. Really do appreciate it. I think the syringes that you and Avi uh, have suggested are really a good way to go. So, folks... Uh, I'll link the one on eBay that uh, Abby uh, mentioned. And uh, Glenn, thanks for the tip on going to uh, a houseware section of the big box store and getting a barbecue syringe. Looks like that'll work too. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Really do appreciate it. Okay, this morning I wanted to give you an update on the podcast and how that's been going. And uh, yeah, it's starting to gain some traction and a lot of viewers are using it, and I'm sure that there are others out there who don't regularly watch the Monday Morning Mailbag or tuning into the podcast, so thanks very much. Second Cup is also getting a lot of traffic. I really do appreciate that. So if for some reason you're not hearing the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast or the Second Cup podcast on the podcast service that you use, please drop me an email at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll look into it and find out what the problem is. As of right now, the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts. All you have to do is search for Monday Morning Mailbag or Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and it should come right up. You'll see a picture of George right there, so you'll know that's the uh, Monday Morning Mailbag podcast. So the Monday Morning Mailbag, the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast will air at the same hour that the uh, YouTube version of the Monday Morning Mailbag airs. So uh, they usually, I usually schedule these for 5 a.m. Monday morning so that uh, folks in uh, Europe and across the pond uh, and some of the, uh, you know, some of the time zones that are a little bit ahead of us have, have the podcast uh, sometime in the morning, sometime in the afternoon, that sort of thing. I like to get it out there as early as possible. And of course, if you're an early riser driving into work, well, you've got it right there for your, for your morning commute. And thanks again for taking it along on your morning commute. Really do appreciate it. So there you go. Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Google Podcasts, the Monday Morning Mailbag, and Second Cup Podcasts. Thanks very much to all who are tuning into it. If you got a problem, just drop me a line. We'll look into it. Thanks very much. Okay, we have an update on the 8,000 subscriber prize giveaway. We gave away the main prize to Charlie Wise. He contacted me within, gosh, a day, and uh, we sent the prize to him, and he received it, and uh, everything came and arrived to him in good order. Um, 
Bug Chief. Uh, I had not heard from viewer Bug Chief. I put out one last uh, request that he contact, contact me uh, sometime during uh, Monday. I made the announcement on the Monday morning mailbag. I said, you know, let me know. Sure enough, he saw the Monday morning mailbag. He contacted me and said, yeah, that's me. I don't know how I missed it. And uh, Bug Chief is Glenn Martin. You just heard from Glenn with the barbecue syringes. It's Glenn Martin. He contacted me and I said, absolutely, the prize is yours. Sent it off to him uh, and it's been delivered. And he said, it has arrived. Thank you so much, Glenn, a.k.a. Bug Chief. So both prizes have been delivered to both winners. And thanks to everybody else out there for sharing, for subscribing, for uh, participating in the prize giveaway. We're going to do it again at 9,000 subscribers. And as you know, Beth Jones has very kindly uh, donated an aggressive Henson razor. Uh, plus, 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 aggressive Henson razor. And that will be given away if, uh, as part of the 9,000 subscriber prize package. My thanks to Beth Jones for that. Thank you very much, Beth. That's very, very generous of you. By the way, Mark Williams also offered to uh, donate uh, a large bag of uh, Black Rifle coffee uh, as part of the 9,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. These, these coffees are absolutely wonderful. So uh, yeah, look for that also to be in the prize package. So I'm looking forward to that. Right now we're at a little over 8,200 subscribers. So we have about 800 to go, somewhere like that. And hopefully uh, that'll happen sooner than later. Really looking forward to doing the 9,000 subscriber giveaway. So thanks again to everybody out there for supporting the channel. You, I mean, it just means so much to me. Uh, without you, this channel and the Monday Morning Mailbag would not exist. My sincere thanks to everyone. And again, congratulations to Charlie and Glenn. I'm so glad you received the prizes. Thanks again, guys. Really do appreciate it. Okay, here's your weekly reminder for the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. Saturday, October 15th, 2022, 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. in Columbus, Ohio. Less than a month now. <laughs> it's coming up on us very, very quickly. Really looking forward to it. Again, Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. Saturday, October 15th, 2022, from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. in Columbus, Ohio. I'm looking forward to it. I hope to see you there. What do you know? Coffee's getting low. That time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Okay, let's get to some of these refill topics. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. And as promised... I got some of the Lavazza here, espresso, Lavazza espresso from my coffee maker. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been toned down a little bit. Still a great, great cup of coffee in that espresso maker. Boy, does that have a kick, but I really, really do enjoy that. But in my coffee maker, just a wonderful, delightful cup of coffee. So my thanks again to viewer Alex Lopez for sending it along. By, by the way, if I forgot to mention, this is whole bean. Uh, it's fantastic, so I put it in my grinder, and my goodness, what a what a beautiful aroma <laughs> that filled the uh, the kitchen when I was uh, grinding it, and also uh, you know making the coffee from the espresso maker and the coffee maker. Absolutely fantastic. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. If you're taking me on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. Really, really do appreciate it. Let's get to some of these refill topics and comments. This first one comes from a viewer, Westlake. That's spelled W-E-S-L-E-Y-K. And I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced, Westlake. Now, the comment disappeared in the comments section, but I have it in email. YouTube alerts me when a comment is made, and the comment is right there in email, and I can just click on the reply link and then go right to that comment and and reply, but for some reason I couldn't find this one. I don't know what happened, but Wes, like, it was a very good comment and I wanted to use it, so my apologies as to why it disappeared. I don't know why. Uh, anyhow, he writes, I have used my gem bullet tip five days in a row for head shaves, and the blade did well for all. I changed blades after the five because I didn't want to push it. 
I have read you can get as many as 10 shaves, but having coarse hair, I called good at five. I bought a sleeve of coated blades from an eBay seller. A couple of days ago, I did my first face shave and it was very close as well. It seems I'm backwards to most as I, I use a more aggressive razor on my head than on my face. That's because two weeks ago, I shaved off my beard for the first time in over 40 years. Wow! Uh, I now have two more Micromatics coming, a clog proof and an open comb. Thanks for all you do. The podcasts are a great idea as well as the second cup. Westlake, thank you very much for the comment regarding the podcast. I really do appreciate it. And thanks so much for confirming how great these gem razors are. It just takes a modification in technique, approach, and also lightening up that touch. Just lighten up that touch much more than you would with the DE razor. Uh, you're shaving your head with it. I commented in a previous Monday morning mailbag, I have never shaved, done a head shave with a micromatic uh, razor. I have the bull tip, also known as the flying wing. I have that one. So if you're doing a head shave with that, I, <laughs> I might attempt a head shave with the bullet tip as well, because uh, I believe that's a little bit a little bit milder than the uh, than the clog proof or the open comb. Let us know how the open comb and clog proof work for you. Would really be interested in it. And thanks very much for confirming that the razor does a great job for head and face shaves. Really, because the the viewer that had commented in a previous show said that he just was not getting very good shaves with the uh, the gem micromatic open comb or the clog proof. Uh, that it was just horrendous. It was a terribly, terribly aggressive shave. So uh, we made some suggestions regarding uh, technique and angle of approach and lightening up on the touch and that sort of thing. So hopefully he'll also read your comments and know that great shaves are possible with these razors. So thanks very much for that, Wes. Like, really do appreciate the comments. Uh, viewer Robert Fagan checked in. And wrote, fantastic and informative Monday morning mailbag as always. Robert, thank you very, very much. Again, it's the viewers out there. They just contribute some great content, and my thanks go out to them. Uh, if not for the viewers, the show would not exist. Anyhow, he continues, in relation to the Brute EDT and air spraying, although it's an option, just be aware that it will have fragrance oils in it, and though highly unlikely... There is a possibility that it will stain clothes, so best to do it before you get dressed. Uh, very, very good tip. And uh, I have the EDT right here. It has a spray applicator. This is from Europe. This is the European um, uh, EDT, uh, Brute EDT. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. And uh, I was thinking about spraying it in the air and walking through it. Now that you've mentioned the clothing aspect of it, I will probably take your advice on that. Uh, he continues here, another option is to spray on pulse points, the pulse on your neck and wrists. This will give it a stronger projection and make it last longer, so just go easy on the sprays if you don't want it overpowering. Another great, great tip regarding that, and uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go for air spray, but yeah, maybe, maybe just very lightly, a, a very, very light spray on the wrists for me uh, might work. Thanks very much for those uh, helpful, informative tips regarding the Brute EDT. And again, folks, this is the European version. Mark Bagwell very kindly sent this along. It comes in a glass bottle. Uh, it's wonderful. It's much more multi-layered than the uh, Brute Aftershave, the American version of the Brute Aftershave. So we really like the European version of Brute. Uh, Uncle L Shaves wrote... As usual, a great Monday morning mailbag full of good info. Thank you very much, Uncle Al. I appreciate that. Thanks for the shout out. And here's a couple more suggestions. One, on the reuse of empty soap jars. Did you know that Sterling also offers 4.5 ounce refill pucks? So if you have some empty soap containers, you could just get the paper wrapped pucks. Yeah, that's a great idea. That really is a very, very good idea. I have also seen a few other artisans offering paper wrap pucks. Ogallala comes to mind and would be interested if other viewers know of other artisan puck sellers. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, who else out there uh, in the artisan uh, shaving soap world offers the 
wrapped pucks that you can just use as a refill for your containers. I know I've done that with Diver Down, and I absolutely jumped on Diver Down refill and put it back in my container. Love Diver Down. So yeah, very, very good suggestion, Uncle L Shaves. Really do appreciate it. He continues with uh, point number two. Two, as for transferring aftershave from a plastic bottle to a glass bottle, I use a long 10 centimeter plus blunt 1.3 millimeter needle attached to a 20 milliliter syringe. I find the needle fits easily in the aftershave restrictor holes. I use the same idea for making up small perfume spray bottles, five or 10 milliliter for travel. Uh, thanks for the dimensions on that. Other viewers will uh, likely go up to Amazon or some other big box seller online and plug in those dimensions and probably get the correct product. So thanks very much for that, Uncle L Shaves. Uh, goes along with what we talked about earlier, syringes and decanting from a plastic bottle to uh, a glass bottle. Thank you very much for that. Viewer JT wrote, Hi Mark, great uh, M3B video. Uh, I have never tried a Zenith, but my Omega Pro 49 was just under $10 almost four years ago. Yeah, we were talking about boar brushes, and the, the Zenith uh, came up. Uh, a wonderful brush, about 10 bucks, and a fantastic, fantastic bargain. And uh, Omega brushes are great. Zenith brushes are great, from what I understand. Uh, so, yeah, thanks very much for the uh, Omega Pro 49 tip. Uh, JT continues, at Fendrahan, the brush is listed at $11.95. That would be the Omega Pro 49. I found my Omega 49 to be very soft and always whips up a nice lather. On another note, I have a Micromatic open comb razor and didn't have a problem during my initial use. Also, I never had a problem going from a straight DE or SE because I am aware of each razor's nuances. I feel that if you are an experienced shaver, then you shouldn't have a problem shaving with any razor in one's den. I am primarily a straight shaver. You are incorrect that the angle of attack is the same as the micromatic open comb. The recommended angle of attack for a straight is a spine width off the skin surface, and therefore it's more steeper than a micromatic open comb. The spine is the top portion of the blade of a straight razor. Have a great week. JT, I cannot thank you enough for this correction. I stand correction. I stand corrected. Thank you very, very much. Now, uh, I shouldn't say it's like, it's exactly like, I should say it's similar in its approach, but you're making a very, very good distinction here. And thank you for sending it along. I really do appreciate it. I am not a straight razor user. So I, uh, although I do have a straight razor uh, and I have some shavettes, uh, I don't use them uh, as regularly as I do DEs and SEs. That's just me. There are so many great DEs out there and some wonderful SE razors that I, that I use. I'm kind of in that lane. So uh, perhaps I stepped outside of my lane when I shouldn't have. And I really appreciate you sending along this information and correcting me. So I think that's going to be all helpful to anybody wanting to use a micromatic open comb or a clog proof uh, in uh, understanding the angle of attack. So thank you very, very much for that. Also, it's going to help anybody who uh, wants to use a straight razor too. Thank you very much for the information. Really, I stand corrected. Cannot thank you enough for sending along, JT. Really, really do appreciate it. Stan Chapman wrote, another great Monday morning mailbag. Ha I have a 1960 fat boy and I sent it in for a tune-up due to mechanical issues I could not fix myself. Though the razor has some brassing on the doors, I did not replate it as I think it adds character to a 60 plus years old razor. Heck, the razor is in better shape than I am now. <laughs> well, I well understand that, Stan, and yeah, Sometimes that is a, a great part of the razor's charm, just to have that original plating there and that little bit of brassing. Uh, I have this fat boy uh, that uh, Jim from Northfield very, very kindly sent along, and it has a lazy door. Let me show you, and, and let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. There it is. There's the lazy door right there, and I have to do that. 
And to me, that's part of its charm. I'm never going to have that corrected. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have this one replated either because that is all part of the charm of this razor. Just that lazy door right there. I absolutely love that. And it also tells me that this is the razor that was sent to me by a uh, very generous viewer. And uh, yeah, I want to keep it that way. And it's in great, great shape. I don't think it has much, I don't think it has any brassing really. I think the plating on it is very, very good. But that door right there, that lazy door right there, uh, I've always felt that that was part of this razor's charm. It works fine. It doesn't affect the shave at all. Uh, it just tells me that this is that particular uh, fat boy, Gillette fat boy. So I absolutely love that. So I absolutely understand uh, your reluctance to have it replated. Uh, tuned up, yeah, so that some of those mechanical errors could be uh, fixed. I understand that. But uh, yeah, sometimes uh, just leaving them the way they are uh, really does add to its character and charm. I absolutely understand that. Uh, Keith Osmond wrote, regarding the Henson Aggressive, the ones made for a group of wet shavers who signed up were V1 in aluminum, uh, in aluminum color. Uh, one, I know because I have one. The version two sold by the razor company are a different batch. Not sure how they came about. Maybe the razor company commissioned them. I don't know, but thanks for that heads up on that, that the aluminum colored ones are the uh, version ones that were, were done for the group and that uh, an extra batch was sent to the razor company. And again, we have one that uh, Beth Jones very, very kindly donated for the 9,000 subscriber giveaway. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, look for, I'm looking forward to doing the 9,000 subscriber giveaway down the road. So make sure you like the channel, share the channel, tell people about us so we get more subscribers so that subscription list grows faster and we could do the giveaways sooner. So uh, Keith Osmond, thanks very, very much for that comment regarding the uh, Henson++ Plus 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 Aggressive uh, Razor. A little bit of background on that. A little bit of history. Really, really do appreciate that. So uh, thanks very much for that. All right, that's it for this week's Refill. Wow, some great, great comments, some great insight, some great information. Thank you all very, very much. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new shaving gear. Okay, we got some great stuff in new shaving gear. We're going to kick it off with three items that uh, viewer Alex Lopez sent along. Alex, thank you very, very much. We have two razors and one brush. One of these razors was already reviewed this past Friday. Uh, the other razor... Planning on doing a review on it, and I've already had a shave. It was fantastic, fantastic shave with this razor. Here it is right here. This is the uh, TRC razor right here from the razor company. Yeah, TRC razor. This is a double-edge safety razor uh, made out of aluminum. Uh, and as they write on their product page, meet the new TRC aluminum three-piece safety razor, a modern, sleek razor designed and manufactured entirely in the USA. A smooth yet efficient razor that can deliver an irritation-free shave without sacrificing comfort and durability. And they write here, we opted for a thick, durable, hard coat anodization that will ensure longevity. Extra large rinse ports in the base plate ensure easy rinsing and no clogging. There you can see that right there. Check that out, huh? Absolutely. Tight tolerances provide for excellent blade clamping and no blade chatter. Absolutely true. Uh, covered blade tabs provide a premium look and feel. Yeah, the end tabs of a razor blade are covered in the razor head. Blade exposure is negative. Ha the handle material is 6061 billet aluminum with 18-8 stainless steel threaded insert. And the uh, head material is uh, 6061 billet aluminum with 18.8 stainless steel pins and post. The uh, weight is 40 grams. Uh, the handle length is 3.5 inches. The handle diameter is 12 millimeters. Standard thread is M5 by 0.8. Now, they say the aggression level on this is four out of 10. 
That's what their beta, beta testers said. Yeah, I think it's right about in there. Maybe even a little more, to be perfectly honest with you, but it's right in there. It's very, very efficient. Uh, they write, this razor would be considered mild, medium, yet efficient with minimum blade feel. I, I'm, I'm kind of in that, I'm kind of in that school of thought there that that's what it is. It's 100% made in USA. I've had a couple shaves with it. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing a review. Now, here's how the blade loads. Right there, it <laughs> the pins are in the base plate and the cap has these holes here. And that's how you, you, you put the blade either here on the base plate or you could put it in the razor cap and just align those pins to go all the way through to the, to go all the way through the cap like that, see that? And then you attach the handle. This is very lightweight, very much like the, uh, the, the Henson razor, very, 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 very lightweight like the Henson. And like the Henson, do not press down. The razor will do the work, uh, but that that absence of additional weight that you might be uh, that you might be used to may tend to cause you to want to press a little bit. Don't. You don't have to. This razor will do all the work. That blade will engage, and it will give you a nice, smooth, efficient shave. Uh, I tended to have a little more blade feel than what they're claiming. I'm going to do a review of it, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But as I recall, I've had a couple shaves with it. I had a little more blade feel with this, but it was a very, very, very good shave. Uh, terrific, terrific aluminum uh, razor and uh, beautiful, beautiful anodizing on it, double coated, and it just looks great. It looks like it's going to last a long, long time. This is one that you could throw in your DOP kit and travel with very, very easily because of the lightweight and because of the mild yet efficient shave it delivers. Absolutely fantastic. Alex, thanks very much for for sending along the TRC razor from the razor company. Going to be doing a review on it down the road. Really looking forward to it. Had a shave or two with it, and it was really, I mean, it really delivered a nice, nice shave. Thanks again, Alex. Really do appreciate it. Okay, razor number two from Alex Lopez is this one here, and this review ran this past Friday. Here it is, the Yaki tile razor head that sits atop a bolt handle. Uh, this entire razor is 316 stainless steel and it's CNC machined and it is absolutely beautiful. Well, at least I know the razor head is CNC machined. I'm assuming that the handle is also CNC machined, but it's absolutely beautiful. And if it looks familiar to you, yeah, it looks <laughs> very, very similar to the Henson razor. Look at that, huh? How about that? That looks... <laughs> Very, very similar to the to the Henson razor. I mean, everything about it is very, very similar. Now here they are side by side. It's a little bit shorter. The Henson has a longer handle. And of course, the Henson is aluminum. This is stainless steel. So this has much more weight. This weighs in at about 3.63 ounces, according to my scale. And of course, the Henson is much, much lighter. Uh, and uh, this shaves like the Henson. The angle of approach here, this face right here, with that blade there, uh, absolutely similar to the Henson. Now, I think the Henson, in many ways, is a little more maneuverable, a little more nimble because of the weight factor. I really do. And uh, there were times when I was using this razor, and I've done a face shave with this, a couple of face shaves and a head shave with this, and I like it a lot. There were times due to uh, lather buildup, that sort of thing, uh, I kind of slid a little bit, and uh, the blade wasn't engaging. So I kind of had to correct and get back on track. Not a problem at all, uh, but I think the Henson did not do that as often as I recall. Now, I'm going to have to do a side-by-side -side comparison of, uh, of both of these razors. Uh, I like both of them. Really, really love the Henson. Uh, this is the Henson Mild. It's fantastic for uh, face shaves and head shaves. And as I say, very, very, very nimble, very, very maneuverable. I really like the Henson. The... Uh, the Yankee tile razor head, pattern after the Henson, I have to assume, uh, has more weight uh, and uh, it, it kind of loses that little bit of nimble maneuverability because of the weight. But the weight of the razor does all the work. Uh, so it's, so uh, it depends on what you want. If you want something that's a little more nimble and maneuverable, uh, then the Henson. If you want something that uh, has uh, more weight and 
and you want the weight of the razor to do more of the work than it's the Yaki with the tile razor head and the bolt handle. And this bolt handle really is terrific. So yeah, there you are, the Yaki tile razor. Really terrific, I did a review on it. I really enjoyed the shave with it. Now, they were saying, uh, I've read someplace online that the, the level of aggression for this was about five or six out of 10. Uh, and really after doing a face shave with this, I thought it was more like a four. So much so, I did a head shave with it. And you know me, if you've been a viewer of this channel for some time, I will not use an aggressive razor for a head shave. Just doesn't agree with me. Uh, so if I'm using this, this razor here for a head shave, and I'm not getting any nicks or cuts, and I didn't get any nicks or cuts, no nicks, no cuts, no irritation, then you know that this is a mild yet efficient razor. And that's why I think four is more of a realistic rating. Uh, that's how I see it. If you have one, let me know what you think below, where you think this should be rated at, four, five, or six. Let me know in the comments below. But a really, really terrific, terrific razor. Again, it's a three-piece razor. Now, Alex sent along a buffer ring on the base plate there. Thank you again, Alex, for that. The buffer ring is not a standard size uh, buffer ring. It's a little smaller. I'm just going to set it aside over here like this. I just want to show you that the cap and the base plate are uh, slot and groove, okay? Slot and groove right there. And those grooves on the base plate do not go through to the bottom. So the bottom is the base plate. The bottom of the base plate is solid. Okay, just wanted to show you that. And the, the it's exquisite, very, very precise, precisely machined. And everything goes together like, uh, like hand and glove. I mean, I'm just going to put the O-ring on there. And the handle just, just matches up nicely. Blade clamping is very good. End tabs of the razor blade are enclosed in the razor head. Really terrific, terrific, terrific razor. So there it is, the Yaki tile razor head on a bolt handle. Somebody said on Mr. G's, uh, Mr. G Shave's channel that uh, this razor head and this handle, the tile razor head and the bolt handle uh, together, uh, the razor is called the DeLorean. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is, but I'll just pass it along for whatever it's worth. If you've heard the same, please comment below. If you have one of these, please comment below. Let me know what you think. Four, five, or six in aggression level. And uh, is it called the DeLorean with the eraser head and handle together? So thanks again to Alex Lopez. Thank you very, very much. It's uh, It really is a fabulous razor. I'm really enjoying the shaves that it's giving me. Me, I think it's a four out of 10. Thanks again, Alex. Also from Alex Lopez is the Frank Shaving Brush. Isn't that beautiful? Frank Shaving Brush, 26 millimeter knot resin handle available on Amazon. I'll have a link below. I've had several shaves with this. I used this brush before cameras rolled and it did a wonderful, wonderful job. The review for this brush runs this Wednesday. I did a bowl lather with it and I used the uh, Starry Night lathering bowl. Uh, thanks again to Beth Jones. Uh, this brush did a wonderful job. It just whipped up heaps and heaps of lather. Absolutely fantastic. Now, when I first uh, handled this brush, looked at it, uh, I didn't have any specs on it. Um, I thought it was a 24 millimeter knot. That's how it impressed me. And uh, turns out uh, it's listed on the Amazon product page as a 26 millimeter knot. Now, let me show you what a 26 millimeter knot looks like. Here is the Simpson T3 Trafalgar synthetic brush right here uh, in my left hand, in my right hand, is the uh, Frank shaving brush. And you can see that, uh, yeah, that th there is a little variation in the size of the knot, is there not? And take a look at it from the top view there, okay? So, I, you know, maybe the, uh, maybe the T3 is a little more than 26 millimeters, and this, this one from Frank shaving is right on the money, 26 millimeter, I don't know but it impressed me when I first saw it as a 24 millimeter knot. Uh, regardless if it's 24 or 26, it really packed a punch. It did a great, great job. Great for bowl lathering, great for face lathering. And as they write on the um, product page, uh, Frank Shaving G4 synthetic hair shaving brush with resin handle for personal and professional shaving, not 26 millimeters. So there it is right there, the handle, is terrific. It is nice and compact, a little bit 
Smaller in height than the T3, as you can see right there, and a little smaller in diameter, but it still affords a really, really nice grip and handled very, very well, fits in the hand very, very nicely. So I really enjoyed this shaving brush. As I said, I've done several shaves with it, a bowl lather and face lathers, and uh, it just does a wonderful, wonderful job. It looks like it's a very good size as a daily driver and also looks to be uh, a brush that will travel very well. Uh, too. So there you go. Uh, something for travel, something for home seems to be that kind of size. Really, really liked it. And the bottom line is whether you use it at home or use it for travel purposes, it really does make a great deal of lather. Uh, it has a nice, nice moderate backbone, splays out very, very nicely. It's really very, very soft. Nice softness. So all around a terrific brush. Really do like it. Enjoy the saw. I enjoy the size. I enjoy the lather it made. Yeah, this is the Frank shaving brush, the G4 synthetic hair shaving brush with resin handle. I'll have a link to it uh, on Amazon. Really nice price point. My thanks to Alex Lopez for sending this along as well. Thanks so much, Alex. Really do appreciate it. Viewer Mark Bagwell checked in and he wrote, Mark, what do you know about Leia shaving cream? Now, it's spelled L-E-A, and I believe that's how it's pronounced, Leia. If I'm incorrect, my apologies. If you know otherwise, please comment below. I think it's Leia. Uh, anyhow, Mark continues, I'm thinking of trying it, but confused on which one. I, I didn't know anything about this shaving uh, company or these products or anything like that. And uh, Mark wrote back and said, Mark, Leia is a large company that makes lots of products for everyone. I'll give you their home website to look at, but apparently they don't ship to the USA. They make shave sticks, soaps, creams, razors, deodorants, aftershaves, and balms. Heck, they even make wipes. Now, you don't get more full service than that. Their big rival is La Toja. Yeah, La Toja, we've, uh, we've used La Toja. La Toja is great. I've used the shave stick. And also the aftershave. The aftershave is wonderful. I have all plenty left there. I'm going to have to use this in an upcoming uh, shave or two when I'm going to review, uh, in reviewing shaving brushes or razors, that sort of thing. Uh, he continues, the reason why I wanted to buy direct is their prices in Spain are fantastic. They have one shaving cream that is meant for barbers to buy, and it's a 250 gram metal tube of shaving cream for 3.5 euros. Right now, the euro and dollar are even. So that's 8.8 .8 ounces of shave cream for $3.50. If you check the prices of shaving products in Europe, it's nothing compared to what we pay. Oh, and one more thing. They offer free shipping on orders of 25 euros or more, just not to the USA. Now, he points out here, make sure to tell the folks living in Canada and Puerto Rico that Leia will ship direct to them. So if you're in Canada or Puerto Rico, get up to this website that I've linked and you can buy Leia. They will ship directly to you, free shipping, 25 euros or more. How about that? So uh, Mark also says, and for cartridge razor users, check out their prices. Yeah, really fantastic, fantastic prices on cartridge razors. And he adds one other thought here. By the way, Sterling Deep Blue Sea is really good. I just received mine, and it will be in my rotation from now on. Now, also, he sent along another link to another link to Perfumes Club. They carry the Leah uh, shaving cream, and I will link that as well. It looks like we can buy uh, from there. If we're in the States, we can buy from this seller. I'm not sure of the price. I'll have to check it again, but I will provide the link below. So, Mark, thanks very much for the update on uh, and the information on Leah Shaving Cream and the company. Really, really do appreciate it. Okay, we're going to give you an update on a couple of shave soaps that are out there that have launched. The first one is Cider House 5 from Phoenix Shaving. Boy, this is a wonderful scent. This is the uh, 10th year that they're offering this. This is a beautiful autumnal scent. It's perfect for the fall season. I absolutely love this scent. I have the shave soap, the aftershave splash, and also the star jelly. It is wonderful. Cider House 5. It is absolutely wonderful. I love, I love, love, love this scent. Absolutely terrific. Also, Beth Jones informed us that uh, Hoffman's Affogato 
has launched. It's selling briskly. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the time this airs, some is still available. Now, the question is, if it's sold out, when will they be bringing it back? I asked this of Beth Jones, and she contacted Robert at Hoffman's. And uh, she said, uh, Mark, here's the response I got from Hoffman's Shave and Soap Company. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for reaching out. We will eventually do more, just don't know the time frame yet. Now, currently, we have, I believe, six sets. Hope this makes sense. Thanks for the support. Yeah, so there it is. If you want some, get up there and get it. They'll be making more. They just don't know when. They're also taking, according to uh, Beth, they're also taking pre-orders on their shave soap Dogfight and the other shave soap Rio Grande. Those are coming up very, very quickly. So keep an eye out for those as well. So uh, Beth, thanks very much for that quick update regarding Affogato, uh, Dogfight, and Rio Grande for Hoffman's. And folks, uh, don't forget Cider House 5 from Phoenix Shaving. Okay, so there's another shaving soap update. Rodney Ripplinger checked in and he wrote, Hi Mark, I stopped at a Dollar Tree today and found a couple of new items that they haven't had before. The soap puck is one that a friend has purchased from them in Louisiana. He says it's okay. I just opened the package now and it has a nice, clean fragrance. The other item is a pre-shave face scrubber. The little fingers on it are soft but still stiff. The handle on the back is also a suction cup so you can stick it to a mirror or wherever. I'm going to like this thing, I think. I may have to pick up another one. Rodney. Hey, Rodney, thanks very much for the Dollar Tree update. I'm going to have to look for these two items myself in the Dollar Tree store. Folks, if you've seen these, if you've used these, please comment below. Let us know. I'm going to look for them. And uh, yeah, if I get some of those, I uh, get a couple of these, get the face scrubber, the, uh, the soap puck, uh, plan on doing a review. So thanks very much for that, Rodney. Really do appreciate it. Okay, speaking of stopping by a local store, I happened to stop by my local discount drug mart where I wanted to pick up some Clubman for today's show uh, because I was low on it and I wanted to show how it could be transferred from a plastic bottle to this glass Wild Country, Avon Wild Country bottle. That's why I went in there to get this because Discount Drug Mart uh, sells this. It's on their shelf. It's about six and a half dollars, six dollars and 49 cents. Uh, really nice price. It's there locally. I don't have to order through Amazon. I just buy it at Discount Drug Mart. Uh, and on the shelf, I came across a new shave cream and aftershave, and I thought I'd pick it up uh, from Burt's Bees, cooling shave cream and uh, soothing moisturizer and aftershave. Now, the shave cream was $8, and the aftershave was $10. The uh, shave cream is about 5 ounces. It is 5 ounces, 5 ounces and 141.7 grams. And the moisturizer aftershave is 2.5 ounces or 70.8 grams right there. Now, you might be familiar with Burt's Bees. On Wikipedia, they write, Burt's Bees is an American multinational personal care product company. The company is a subsidiary of Clorox that describes itself as an earth-friendly natural personal care company making products for personal care, health, beauty, and personal hygiene. Its products are distributed globally. Burt's Bees manufactures products with natural ingredients using minimal processing. So that's kind of what's uh, the approach of Burt's Bees. I'm looking forward to trying these. I don't know if this is a shave cream that will give me a lather uh, used with a shave brush. I'm not sure. I have to look at the directions. It says uh, wet skin and apply cream in a circular motion. Rinse after shaving. Uh, that's all it says. So I'm not sure if it's going to build a lather or if it's going to be a super slick, like a Trader Joe's or a Cremo, something like that. And uh, the moisturizer aftershave, looking forward to using this as well. Now the scent, they describe it as a, a rather woodsy scent, a fresh, crisp, woodsy scent. Uh, right here it says, uh, get an ultra smooth shave and a cool, refreshing finish from our uh, soothing shave cream with a crisp woodsy scent. Maybe you can see that right there. That's what it is. I'll hold that up there like that. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's The scent it reminds me a little bit of Nivea, but there is that crispness there in both of these. Both of these, the scent reminds me a little bit of Nivea, but there is a crispiness to it. Uh, it's a little something extra there. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying these, trying both of these. But I just kind of took a little sample 
uh, from the shave cream and also from the aftershave just before. Put a little bit on my hand and just kind of worked it in. Just yeah, and it's uh, very much in the in the mold of Nivea, but there is a little something extra there. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying these. So if you have a discount drug mart in your area, or perhaps there is a drugstore in your area that carries Burt's Bees, check out the cooling shave cream and the moisturizer aftershave. Again, this was $8 for five ounces, $10 for 2.5 ounces. And I'm looking forward to trying and reviewing both of them and uh, see what kind of result we get. So Burt's Bees. Uh, if, it's on, if it's available on Amazon, I'll have a link to it. Uh, I'm not sure what their price is going to be. Could be more, could be less. We'll find out if, there's a, if it's available on Amazon. I will definitely link to it. Burt's Bees. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Okay, we've got something from viewer Eduardo Lancini. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Eduardo. Uh, all the way from Brazil. Now, the comment was in Portuguese. I used uh, Google Translator or the Edge Browser Translator. I'm not sure which one kicked in. I think it was the Edge Browser Translator from uh, Microsoft Bing. And it translated to English. And here is his question. Uh, plus one, great video, buddy. Uh, here's a question of mine. Do I have to start shaving with a high level of the shaver and going decreasing? Well, what he's asking here is regarding a, an adjustable razor. Do you have to start high and then with each pass decrease? Uh, if you can help me, I'll be grateful. Too bad that here in Brazil, there are no videos as good as yours. Oh, thanks very much. I, I really appreciate that, Eduardo. Thank you so much. Have a great Sunday and stay with God. Thank you very, very much for the kind words. I really do appreciate it. And again, I take this to mean, and again, it might have lost a little bit in translation, which is better uh, with an adjustable razor, the increased method or the decreased method. Uh, now, I had a shave right before cameras rolled, and I used my supply uh, single edge adjustable razor. This adjusts from one to six. This is a wonderful adjustable razor. And uh, single edge injector razor, really like this razor a lot. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, and this question here gave me a nice opportunity to use this. And for this particular shave, I use the increase method. Decrease or increase, it depends on uh, your face, your rules. That's really the bottom line here. A lot of wet shavers really think the increase uh, method is the way to go. Why? Because you're starting milder, and then as you increase, you're shaving closer with each shaving pass. Sort of like using a lawnmower. That's the, that's the illustration they use. If your grass is very, very high, like a very, very thick beard, you're going to set the lawnmower higher so that it takes a very light first cut from the lawn, and then you set it lower or closer and then take a, another cut of the lawn, and then set it low again, and then take a, another cut. This way your, your, uh, your lawnmower is working more efficiently and it's not getting clogged up. Same way with doing the increase method. If you have a, a large amount of beard growth, one, two, three days worth of beard growth, starting at a milder setting, uh, will uh, take, and you're taking down your beard in stages anyhow, so it'll make a nice light pass to kind of get the shave going and remove uh, the top uh, edge, or so to speak, or the, 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 the higher growth away from your beard. And then as you dial up a little more, uh, now you'll do your second pass and you'll, you'll actually have a closer shave and you'll be shaving down a little more closer than the third pass where you would be at the most aggressive level. You will really knock off the remaining uh, whisker and really get a nice, close, smooth shave. That's kind of the thinking uh, of, of doing the increase method. I've also used the decrease method where I start aggressive and then I, uh, with each successive pass, I lighten up on the aggression. I start at maybe five and then the second pass will be three and the third pass will be maybe one and a half, two. 
With the increase method, uh, for this particular razor right here, I started at one and a half, one and a half. My next pass was at about two and a quarter or so, and the third pass was probably about a little more than two and a half. Somewhere in there, one and a half, two, two and a half, right in there for three passes. And I tell you, I got a really, really nice result. Um, I probably could have finished up at three for my final pass and gotten a little closer. Uh, so, you know, it really depends on what you're comfortable with. And I have, I'll put it to the viewers, what do you think? Is the increase method better than the decrease method or, the, or is the decrease method uh, better than the increase method? Uh, I, I, I use them both, but in all honesty, I use the decrease method more than I do the increase method. Uh, Eduardo, your question and your comment here uh, has inspired me to start using the start using the increase method more, and I think that's what I'm going to do with my adjustable razors. Uh, the supply adjustable razor uh, did a wonderful job giving you a really really nice shave using the increase method. I kept it on the mild side, and I got a nice shave with it. I think next time around, uh, now that I understand the settings for the increase method, I might increase the aggression a little bit more than one and a half on the first pass more than two, two and a quarter on the second path and pass, and probably up to three on the third pass, something like that. I prefer my shaves to be on the mild side, but using the increase method, I think I can up it a little bit given how comfortable this razor is. So it's going to be a little bit of experiment, experimentation is what I'm saying. Try the decrease method, try the increase method, use different levels of aggression, and see which one works best for you. Again, what do you use? Increase or decrease, please comment below. Let us know. Eduardo, I hope that helps in some way. Thanks very much for the question. And thanks so much for uh, checking in from Brazil. I am really, really flattered that, uh, that you watched the show all the way from Brazil. Thanks very much. Hello to you and all the viewers in Brazil. Viewer Mike Wright wrote, Hey, Mark, I'm just wondering how long does a container of Parasso Green red or white last. I'm looking at moving over to that instead of using Barbasol all the time. I'm usually a one pass shaver that shaves like every two days. I'm mostly worried about the cost over time, like scared the Parasol will last only a quarter of the time compared to the Barbasol or half of what the can of Barbasol does. Uh, hey, uh, Mike. Uh, I think you'll find that the Parasso is going to last a good long time. I think it'll probably last longer than the Barbasol. I also think that once you use a brush and a Parasso, it's going to be a more satisfying shave. I think that once you use the Parasso and a brush, and I recommend the Greener. Green's got a great eucalyptus menthol kick to it. I think you'll like it in the morning. Really wakes you up. Anyhow, if you use a shaving brush, a good synthetic shaving brush and Parasso, uh, shave soap, and you load that brush, you either do a bowl lather or a face lather. I think you're absolutely going to love the process. I think you're going to get a better lather. You're going to get more protection. You'll have a better shave. Uh, and I also think that you're going to want the Parasso <laughs> shave soap to deplete much more quickly than the Barbasol because you're going to be hooked. You're absolutely going to love the wet shave, and you're going to look around and say, what other shave soaps are available that I can use? And you'll, you're going to want to try a Tabak, a Chella, uh, a Phoenix shaving, a Sterling, uh, a Hoffman shave soap, uh, Sudsy Soapery, that kind of thing. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, but if you absolutely don't do that and you just stick with Parasso, I think you're going to find you're going to get a more satisfying shave. You're going to get much better protection. Uh, you're going to enjoy the process a lot more, and I think you'll find that the Parasso Shave Soap will last longer than a can of Barbasol. My guess is it'll last longer than a can of Barbasol. I've never compared the two, to be perfectly honest with you. I've never compared the two side by side, and I've never used a shave soap uh, for an entire month or an entire two months, anything like that, to gauge how long, uh, how long it'll last uh, for my shaves. I'm always rotating different shave soaps uh, throughout the days and weeks, uh, reviewing different shave soaps, that sort of thing. But I have found that Parasso has lasted a good long time. This one's been around for about a year, and I use it on and off. 
And you know what? The scent is still beautiful, and that's how much I have left. And boy, that's going to give me a lot of great quality shaves. And if you're doing one pass, you're not going to have to load your brush that much. I think you'll find it'll last a good long time. Now, if anyone out there ha has used Parasso uh, at the start of the month, every single day uh, for your shaves, can you give us an idea of how long a tub of this will last if you shave every day? Mike is not shaving every day and he's doing one pass. So Mike, <laughs> I think this is going to last a lot longer than Barbasol. That's my guess. But uh, I'm just asking the viewers out there if you can gauge the long-term use of Parasso and give Mike an idea, please comment below and let us know. Mike, thanks for the question. Really, get a tub. It's only 10 bucks. Get a tub. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. If you don't want to go with menthol and eucalyptus and your skin is on the sensitive side, then get Parasso White. Parasso Red is sandalwood. I have it. I don't use it as often as I do the green and the white. White is good for sensitive skin. Green has got a great menthol eucalyptus kick to it. Thanks very much for the uh, question, Mike. I hope that helped. Viewer Glenn Martin checked in again, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. So today, after I had my shave, I got to wondering, does it really matter what temperature we use when cleaning the soap out of our shaving brush after we're done shaving? Would the temperature be different cleaning synthetic versus natural bristle brushes? Cold, warm, hot, very hot water? I'm inclined to believe hot water is better because of the oils and fats in shaving soaps, but I don't know. What say you? Curiously yours, Glenn. Uh, Glenn, that's a great question, and it's one that I have seen discussed on many a wet shaving forum and have heard from viewers uh, regarding and here is the short answer, as I understand it. Never hot water with a shaving brush. Never hot water. It doesn't have anything to do with the, the hairs, whether they're uh, natural or synthetic. It has to do with the glue in the knot securing it to the handle. Hot water, very, very hot water over time, if you're soaking the brush or you're... Uh, uh, Soaking the brush or cleaning the brush in hot, hot, hot water, the glue over time will actually melt and could even dissolve. And that means a lot of shedding from uh, the brush. So you don't want to use extremely hot temperatures, hot water temperatures, when uh, you're cleaning a brush or even when you're soaking a brush. Now, I know that there are some wet shavers that will use hotter water to soak their brush, but it's just the tips that they're soaking and not the, the knot here at the base, where the base of the knot meets the handle where the glue is. Uh, they'll use it just, just there. I don't even do that. I use warm water to soak my brush, and I use warm water to clean my brush. That's it. I never use hot, hot water to clean my brush. I never use hot, hot water to soak my brush. I've always been told by those who are more in the know, who are more experienced than I, that extremely hot water will loosen up the glue and it'll actually destroy the, uh, the glue in the, in the knot and you'll have, uh, uh, the knot will become separated from the handle. So uh, don't use hot, hot water. <laughs> hot, hot water, okay to get that razor going like I do. Uh, you know, that's a different story, but uh, use warm water on your brush. Uh, to soak it, to clean it, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's kind of my rule of thumb. I, again, I know some wet shavers like to use hot water just to kind of dip the tips in. You know, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, you, I don't do that as a practice. And I'm sure that they could comment on that as to how that is done and how they do it so that it doesn't affect the glue in the knot. Uh, but for me, warm water to uh, soak, warm water to clean, Never, never hot. All right, Glenn, I hope that answers your question. And folks, if you have anything to add to that, please comment below and let us know. Really do appreciate it, Glenn. Thanks again for the question. Okay, I wanted to share this with you, and I'm going to make sure my coffee is well out of the way, and you'll know why in just a minute. Uh, and I got this from viewer Glenn Martin, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. Sorry, it's taking me a bit longer to mail this to you. 
As a cartoonist, I thought you might like this. It's an actual ad that was in the Cosmopolitan in the year 1894. Thought you might want to frame it uh, for your shave den or just have it. It's actually two cartoons in one. Best regards, Glenn Martin. Wow. Where do you see this, folks? This is amazing. Glenn, thank you very, very much. Uh, here it is right here. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. There it is. Can you see that? There it is. I also took a photo of it, and I'm going to display it on screen so you can see it. Look at that. And uh, it reads here, uh, a cartoonist was recently asked by a fellow artist, what's the difference between the Williams shaving soap and any ordinary toilet soap or other shaving soaps? Putting down his razor, he was shaving at the time, and seizing a scrap of paper, he outlined the above sketch and handing it to his friend said, well, that's about it. And that is such a clever ad because you can see all you have to do is cover up one side or the other and you'll get the man's expression and how he's enjoying the William shave versus the shave that's not Williams. How about that? 1894. Now, this is absolutely beautiful, uh, Glenn. Thank you very, very much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and have this uh, professionally digitized. There's a service, I think they're over in Brexville. My brother has used them. And I ran an errand for him, uh, dropping off some artwork and uh, went there. And uh, they have a wonderful digitizing and framing service. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this digitized first before I frame it. And then I'm going to have a copy made and perhaps blown up a little larger, have that framed and then have this framed as well. So yeah, this is definitely worth digitizing and saving digitally. It's absolutely beautiful. I've taken a photograph of it already, which is in itself kind of digitizing it, but it's not as accurate as, as, as this service uh, offers. So that's what I'm going to do. This is absolutely beautiful. This is a keeper. And again, that's absolutely fantastic art. My gosh, absolutely beautiful. 1894 Cosmopolitan shaving ad, Glenn, Thank you so much for thinking of me. Thank you so much for thinking of me in, in terms of uh, cartooning and shaving. Wow, this is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so very, very much. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below. Let me know. Check out all the wonderful artisan shave soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen. They make some wonderful artisan shave soap. They offer some wonderful, wonderful shaving gear. So please, when you get a chance, give them a visit. Check out what they have to sell. They really do offer some wonderful, wonderful items for the wet shaving community. So thanks so much for taking the time to check them out. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash marks rating where you'll find all the products I review in this channel organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.